extra. Okay, so bute 2 ion and bute 1 ion can undergo addition reactions with hydrogen using a pal palladium based catalyst. Okay, you're given structural form that's of, that's fine. State how transition metals can act as catalysts. Well, that's just pretty much straight out of content statements. You're going to have to mention D electrons, um, but specifically, you need to say that they are unpaired. Okay, there's lots of ways that you can talk about that. So you could say that you've got unfilled d orbitals, um, or you could say that these electrons can be either donated or accepted, which is all to do with the variable oxidation states. So there's all of that basically in the mark scheme for that one. Okay, in the reaction of bute 2 ion with hydrogen, cis bute 2 ene is formed. Draw the skeletal for formula of cis bute 2 ene. So, cis means that we have got the two functional groups or the two groups that we're looking at around the double bond on the same side of the double bond. So, let's put the double bond in. Let's put them on the same side. That's it. Okay, any way around that you draw it, as long as that is the structural system that you've got. Okay. In the reaction of bute 1 ene, with hydrogen butonein is formed. Explain why butonein has no geometric isomers. Well, so here's your here's your triple bond for butonein. Here is your double. Then we go to butonein. Um, here are my hydrogens, and there's the problem. Okay, the hydrogens here are the same. You have the same functional groups here, so even if I swap these round, I still end up with exactly the same thing. So it's to do with these groups, these hydrogens, that there is no option of giving a different structural formula. Okay. Um, calculations. Okay, we are looking at enthalpy calculations here. Um, well, delta G really, feasibility. From the hydrogenation of but 2 I use the data in the table to calculate the standard enthalpy change. Right. Reasonably gifty, it's straight out the data book. You're just looking at delta H is the sum of your formation of products uh, minus the sum of your delta H F of reactants. Okay, plug them in. So minus 6.99 minus 199 plus zero. Okay, so there's your that's your product and there's your reactants. Okay. Put it all in your calculator, you get 125.99, which they're expecting you to take to 126. Okay. Kilojoules per mole. So I'm looking for delta S. My delta S I'm going to get as use it working through delta G, okay? Because I've not got delta S there. I could just have done the usual thing here if I had delta S, but I don't have delta S, so I'm gonna have to go delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so I'm going to have to, I've got my delta H already. And I've got information to work out delta G. Delta G is going to be doing exactly the same thing here. So my delta G is going to be the sum of my delta G of my products minus the sum of delta, oh, delta G reactants. So I'm running out of space at the side. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the screen, if that will still stay there. Okay, so we've got our delta G here is going to be 65.9 minus 185, giving me minus 119.1. Now this is also in kilojoules per mole. Okay, it's important because you're going to have to make sure that you keep everything in the same thing when you're working the way down. Okay, right, so we've now got, so I've now got delta G and I've now got delta H. T I have as well because this is in standard state, you know, it's, it's, it's got the, the naught. So that's 298k. So that's okay. And then we've just got our delta S to do. Okay, so however you want to substitute or rearrange. Okay. Okay, let's work from a straight substitution of values. So hopefully you can see it clearer, but you can obviously do the rearrangement and then do the substitution. Okay, so that's this is my substitution. Um let's just flip it over so it's something I can work with. Okay. So to just get my minus 98 delta S, I'm going to go minus 119.1 plus 126. So I've got to 6.9, sorry, minus 298 delta S. And then divide by minus, oh, so that's delta S. Um, so my 6.9 divided by that, uh, minus 298, 
gives me minus 0 0.02315, so that's 0 0.0232 kilojoules. This is in per, ke per kelvin per mole. Okay, now that's important. Normally you would see S as joules, but we've kept everything as kilojoules, so that's okay. If you wanted to shift everything into joules and run it as joules, also okay, as long as you are consistent in your units, they are happy with you. Okay, right, calculate the temperature in K below which this reaction is feasible. Um, so that's a, another one that you're, you're expected to know. You're expected to know that reactions become feasible at delta G being zero. So you're going to use this equation again, but you're going to make delta G zero. Um, so rearrange to get my T. Um, so T delta S is going to be delta H, therefore T is delta H over delta S. I really should put my knots in. Feel free to go through all of these, but they're going to accept a calculation to this one. Um, okay, so we've now got just plug in our values. So minus 126 over minus 0 0.0232 gives me a temperature of 5431 Kelvin. That's it. Quite a lot of work. Quite a lot of working in this one, that's for sure.